Hi, and welcome to Finding the Facts with Dan. I'm Dan O'Brien, and in this long overdue episode, we're going to take a look at AI in the form of ChatGPT and learn a little bit about jails as well. Um, everybody's using ChatGPT nowadays. I'm using it for um, writing code um, for Excel, um, some for Adobe Acrobat Pro. Um, I've done some stuff with Midjourney in Discord. Um, a lot of people are using it for writing um, emails or, you know, all kinds of different things because it's so darn smart, isn't it? It's a little scary, too, and, and folks are, are warning uh, us about that maybe we're progressing way too fast. And that's something that I discovered today. But a little background before we get into the AI end. I work at a county jail. Done that for quite, a, quite some time. Um, there's a lot of misnomers about county jail versus prison. Not prison you're sentenced to more than a year, a year and a day, okay? County jail gets people off the street, out of the courts, back from prison on appeal. We don't decide when people come to jail. We don't decide when people go home. It's all up to the judges and the arresting officers. So we gotta take them when we get them. We release them when we're told. So in jail, you don't have just little crimes. Anybody that ends up in prison, anybody that you've seen in Supermax, when you watch those uh, Discovery Channel shows, those people all went through a local county jail. So we've got anything from criminal traffic like a DUI charge to domestic to drug offenses, sex offenses, and murderers. So it runs the whole gamut. And then on top of that, you know, we house males, we house females, we house juveniles that are being tried as adults, whether they're males or females. Um, and then obviously none of those can be mixed together. Males got to be separate from the females. Juveniles can't go around adults. Um, and then you break it down even further into custody levels, low, medium, high. There's different terms for it. Usually there's three custody levels. Um, so you've got males and females and juveniles in three different custody levels. And then you got to go even further. And you might have protective custody, disciplinary confinement, somebody with medical issues, um, we get them in, then they've got terminal illness, and we've got to take care of them because the judge says they've got to do time. Um, the mentally ill, that's one of our fastest growing populations. Um, everybody says defund the police. Don't defund the police. We need cops on the road. We need deputies and officers in a jail. We need officers in the prisons to keep everybody safe. But we do need to concentrate on helping the mentally ill. Some of it's inherent mental illness that, that's uh, in, inherited or just like any other medical issue. Some of it's drug induced and is only lasting for a short time or other is they've just fried their brains because they've been doing drugs for so many years. So with that said, when you break down the different populations and custody levels and and then types inside of those custody levels that can't be mixed together it becomes a confusing mishmash when you have to figure out how you're going to house all these people in a thousand beds or whatever the count is for you know the available room is in a jail whether it's 200 or a thousand or five thousand you can't just look and say, we've got a thousand beds and we can house a thousand people. A jail is technically overcrowded when it gets to about 80%, just because you've got to keep everybody separate. You have a fluctuation in a jail more than in a prison. Prisons normally take people on certain days of the week from certain areas of the states, um, and they control how many they get on certain days. 
we have an influx. We may have a ton more females one day than we do males. We may have an influx of mentally ill. Um, like I said, that population has been growing. So time to time, we have to sit down and figure out if we move certain classifications around into different housing areas that may have more beds or less beds in order to better use the space that we've got. When you sit down and you try and figure that out with all those variables, it can get really confusing. So the other night I was thinking, geez, chat GPT. Why can't we use AI to help us figure this out? So I fed it all the information of our current counts and custody levels and locations um, just in general um, and try to simplify it, like just give it a code, a one for, you know, that means something to me, but it really doesn't mean anything to um, the machine. Uh, and it really didn't get it right off the bat. So I broke it down really simply and I gave it, here's our list of locations. Here's our custody levels that are currently in those areas. So you just have a list of areas and a list of classifications. And then I gave it a separate list from a pivot table um, from information on our, on our current population and gave it the classifications with the total number of inmates with those classifications. And I made those classifications include the male, female, juvenile, and whatnot. I fed those two tables in and then I gave it certain stipulations. We got to have medical stay in this location. We got to have our program folks stay in this pop in or in this location. We got to have our medical uh, or our mental health uh, folks stay in this uh, location. And it did a fair job of moving some people around. Um, and when I looked at it, it didn't do a whole lot. Not, a, not like I thought it was going to, but here's where it got really, really crazy. Kind of, kind of funny in a way. I asked it how many people actually moved and I, I can't remember what the number was. It said it moved 149 uh, folks total from, you know, a few from here to here, a few from here to there. Um, and then I said, what's the total number of inmates? And we're just for, for, you know, argument's sake, we're just going to use the number 1122 because I'm going to show you that in a minute. Um, and it came back with a weird number. So you know, I said, give me those numbers, parse it out for me. And we'll, um, so I, so I could evaluate the information myself in Excel. So, Let's take a look at this. What I did is I've got the numbers here, right? 52 different numbers to coincide with 52 different locations. Um, these numbers are, they really don't mean anything. They're just numbers I was playing with. So all these numbers add up to, um, I used a formula, so I'm not doing stupid math. It's 1,122 total. Okay. So let's copy these. We will bring them into ChatGPT and give them to them. And we'll see what they come up with. Please give me a sum of the numbers I provided. 812. Okay. Are you sure? Eight hundred and seventy. Um I'm glad uh Chat GPT doesn't work with us because we wouldn't know how many we really had. Um it obviously can't count. So 
these are the numbers again. You seem to be off by quite a bit. And I'll paste those in. Now it gives me 1,013. Let's say I put these numbers in to oops, Excel, and it gave me a sum of 1122. See, now it says that the correct number is 1122. Add them again. Eleven hundred and twenty-two, right? Okay, so now let's paste the numbers in again. We'll add one. What is the sum of these numbers? I added one and it took one away. So uh, we're relying on this to give us code, to keep us safe. I mean, obviously not ChatGPT, but we're moving ahead with um, AI just so fast. Um, and it's scary that we're, we're relying on it this heavily. I mean, already people are are using this every day. They're, they're changing websites. They're using it to analyze and it can't even add up 50 some odd numbers. I found that pretty amusing. My son did too. He laughed. Um, let me know in the comments below if you've come across anything that's, that's crazy like this. I mean, I've, I've gotten into politics and debates and stuff on here just for fun. And obviously it's programmed with some bias to the left or the right, depending on which way you want to look at it and what questions you feed it. Um, but to have it not be able to add a few numbers up is just insane. Let me know um, what you've come across that doesn't work. Um, put it in the comments below, and uh, I look forward to seeing you next time.